all right guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is mofe if you already know me and in today's video yeah we're going to be talking about color grading your images okay so i've been trying to do this video for like the past three days um the first day i don't know for some reason i got the extremely camera shy i didn't even know how to do this video the second day there was no lights and i had to use my laptop and a lot of factors there i was just lazy that day but then i had to make this video today because uh, i had to release this week i put out a question on instagram last week um what you guys want me to talk about in this week's video and uh, mogali asked me to talk about um, color grading that's at ogali underscore e so she asked me to talk about color grading so um, that's actually a topic i'm really interested in in photography in photography this is actually my favorite topic or my favorite part of photography so i'm stick around to the end of this video i have a lot to tell you and i'm also giving out presets some of my presets um, so please stick around to the end of this video so you can know how to get them all right so what's color grading color grading is basically being able to improve your images by manipulating the colors in that image um, some couple of reasons why you want to color grade your images is first of all to improve that image not to beautify it Another reason I found is so you can be able to create contrast in your images. What exactly? Let me just find out the meaning of contrast. Okay, go. What is the meaning of contrast? Here's the definition of contrast. The state of being strikingly different from something else in juxtaposition or close association. All right, so you heard from Google, that's the meaning of contrast. Um, the thing why the reason why most people um, find some photos more interesting or more how would I say more attractive than other photos because of the use of contrast by that photographer you can use contrast in sizes in uh, maybe composition or even in color so in color grading you have the liberty of creating contrast in your images um, an example of a good contrast would be the teal and orange look that is what is mostly used in the film industry. The reason why it is used in the film industry is because the skin has an orange color. So the exact complementary of this color is the teal. Is the teal. So when they use teal and orange, I create a contrast image, which is very um, attractive to the eye. So when you're color grading, you're trying to create contrast. Okay, another reason why you want to color grade your images is because you want to be able to control the dynamics of the image. What I mean by that is that um, when you're taking a photograph, you would want your um, viewer to be able to know what exactly the subject is. So take for example, this is, you're in like a crowd, of, you're, in, you're taking a picture of like a landscape or with a person there you want the person to be the exact to be the subject and you want the viewers eyes to know look at that object you would want to collaborate your images in a way that that person is you know the prime focus a way you can do that is by using the brighter colors like maybe reds or maybe some oranges because when you're choosing your colors you pick the color that has you know a higher saturation or a higher tendency to be more attractive to the eye if I held um, the color red and the color blue at the same you know, level, they are the same contrast, the same, sorry, I mean, they are the same saturation, the same luminance value. Um, your eye would naturally think the red was brighter, but the, the actual truth is that both of them are the same saturation and the same brightness. So um, some colors just stand out more than others, even though they are in the same um, satur um, saturation level and um, luminance level so a way to attract the eye of the viewer is by using brighter colors to you know pull the eye of the viewer to that part of the image also you can also um, tell the viewer what exactly you want them to feel in cartoons um, they're trying to express a more joyous or real feeling so they will use more brighter colors but in take horror movies for example they're trying to convey um, some sort of fear and um, closure in their images so they um, use desaturated cold tones in their videos so there'll be lots of blues and saturated colors and that tries to you know, create this um, uh, fear that they're trying to create in the image with color grading you can create the mood 
that you want your viewer to you know feel when they're looking at that image so if you're trying to create something that's more horror vibe you won't want to use like extremely bright colors because um that will really displace your viewer because you won't understand what exactly you are trying to convey in that image so if you take a look at these two images here they are the exact same picture but two different um, styles of color grading say for this image here i collaborated with blue tones and um, the, sat the saturated colors but um just to balance out the saturation i increase the saturation of the reds so that um, there is contrast in the image so not everything is totally desaturated but in this color grade here everything is warm and um, it just seems more inviting and brighter in the image so um, this is a picture with two with the exact same subject exact same picture but you no know, two different moods um, convey this image here is um, um, a more um, you know creepier horror vibes but here is a more bright um, bright woman and inviting uh, color grid so that's an example of how color grading can totally change uh, the mood of your image another reason why we're color grading our images is because we're trying to tell the viewer um, give the viewer information about the environment what I mean by that is take for example you are in the desert you won't want to color grade your images to be blue because that is just uh, going to not make any sense because you know the desert is it's hot, it's warm, suns are brownish and reddish, so color grading your image blue won't just make any sense. So um, when you color grade your image in places that are like cold, you would want to use blue because you know, blue is associated with um, the cold, so you won't want to use like reds and all that because that just not going to make sense for the entire environment. Also, let's say maybe you were in like the jungle or you are taking pictures of the trees you want to use more greens and maybe yellow so using um, a different color like maybe purple or blue might not totally make any sense in that image so um, you have to also be conscious about your environment the environment that that picture was taken so you understand what colors you are meant to be using for your color grid so how do you pick the right colors to color grid with you want to use the color wheel the color wheel is just a radial representation of you know the color harmonies you're going to want to be using the color wheel and referencing it from time to time to know what colors go with some other with certain colors take for example when you're going out um, and you want to pick the clothes to wear you won't pick like a red shirt blue pants um, a green hat purple socks um, magenta um, jackets and you know, what green shoes or white shoes because unless you're a clown, you're going to look totally ridiculous. Some colors just don't work with certain colors, while some colors work with certain colors. So the color will just be a representation of what colors work with what colors. So you're going to be referencing your color wheel um, a lot when you're color grading your images. So one way you can access the color wheel is by going to colors.adobe.com. It's an Adobe website where you can you know, reference the color wheel and also generate palettes for your images. Um, I want also need to have my color wheel on the go so i have an app on my phone um the name of the app is called color wheel it's an android app so um, if you are team android i'm not team apple you can check out the um, color wheel on the play store um, i don't know any um, ios or apple app for uh, the color wheel but i'm pretty i'm pretty sure there is an app for it there are six major color harmonies and that's the monochromatic the complementary, the split complementary, the triadic, the tetradic, and the analogous. There's a seventh one, but nobody really talks about it, and that is the ascented analogic. So, uh, but just people just are more used to the um, basic six. So, the monochromatic um, is pretty simple, it's just making use of only one color in the image. So, um, in the monochromatic, take for example, you want to use your color orange in your image. You would only the only thing you are changing in that entire image is just the saturation and the luminance values of the colors. But just to make sure that um, we are not lost, hue is another fancy name for color. So when someone says hue, they are referring to color. So orange is a hue, blue is a hue, red is a hue. Saturation refers to the amount of that color in the image. So if something is a color has a low saturation. Uh, that means it's not really going to be present. If that's a high saturation, it's going to be like really bright in that image. 
would be a lot of it in that image. So, and then luminance, it refers to the shade of that image, of that color, sorry. So, um, when you control the luminance value, you're just controlling the brightness or, you know, the dark, how dark that color is. So, HSL, if you're familiar with it, means hue, saturation, and luminance. So, um, the uh, in the monochromatic, you're only making use of one hue, but you're only going to be um, altering the saturation and the luminance values of that color. For the complementary, you're only making use of colors that are directly opposite to one another. Um, a good example is the teal and orange look, which is used in lots of film industry, as I've mentioned before. So the orange, I just say orange, my God. So the orange is directly in opposition with the teal color. So um, that's why it's used in lots. It has this very bright, very amazing contrast. That's why the complementary scheme is probably one of the most popularly used um, color harmony in the entire photography industry. The teal and orange is used a lot. Um, it's actually even one of my favorites. Um, the split complementary, it's the same as complementary, just that you're going to pick on the opposite side of this color, you're just going to split that end into two. What I mean by that is um, the opposite of orange according to the color, the direct opposite will be the teal. But instead of picking teal, we're going to split that teal into two. And then by the size of teal, we have purple and a little bit of like orange. Oh wait, no, sorry, that was my bad. The opposite of teal is orange. I am going to split the orange into two. So the two closest colors to the orange will be the purple and the kind of yellowish orange. So that's how the uh, split complementary works. Uh, one of my favorites would be my favorite, my most used color harmony would be the complementary and sometimes the split complementary. The reason why there's a split complementary is because we're trying to give uh, more freedom on um, the colors you can use in your image. So you're not just trying to get only two colors, you have a little bit more variety in your colors. That's why the split complementary exists. The basic rule when you're using your colors in color grading is that when you pick a certain color, you don't use all the colors in equal, in equal proportion. What I mean by that is, um, take for example, again, the teal and orange look. When you are using the teal and orange, you don't use the teals in 50% or orange in 50%. You don't use them in equal amounts. What you're going to do is that you're going to use more of the muted colors. That is the teal in this reference. So you'll be using probably like 70 or 75% more teals than your oranges. The reason why is because um, there are certain colors, the, the orange is brighter, so it's going to pronounce itself more in this reference. And using your colors in equal proportion actually throws people off. It doesn't actually, uh, it's not actually very appealing to the human eyes. So when you're making use of the teal and orange look, you'll be using more teals than a um, little less orange. It's probably might restrain the orange to only like the skin. Or maybe if you're shooting at golden hour, you might use it only at the sun. So that's how you make use of this color scheme. Um, if you're making use of display complementary, you would also use the teals more, and um, maybe you use your purples and your um, yellows a little bit less in your images. Another thing you should know when using when using your colors is that, and I've referenced this before earlier in this video. You would use only your brighter colors to emphasize places that you want the viewer's eyes to go to. And you use your darker colors for where you wouldn't really want them to pay attention to. If you notice, when in uh, most famous paintings of um, Jesus, is mostly wearing red because um, red represents power and also the brighter color. So um, only Jesus would be wearing the red so in a way to emphasize only him in that image how the entire how the rest part of the image will be more muted colors so you have using you'll be using your brighter colors and higher saturation values for areas where um, there's going to be more emphasis and um, you'll be using your darker colors for maybe your shadows all right so another thing you should know when color grading your images and mixing your colors is don't oversaturate your image. Don't uh, crank up the saturation value to a hundred or increase the vibrance up to a hundred. That's just going to be overdoing it. And you know, oversaturated colors are just it's just overkill for your images. So that's just going to ruin your images. 
so please don't over saturate your colors don't overdo it use them in a reasonable proportions to you know beautify your image because that is the basic essence of color grading to beautify your image and overdoing certain things will just you know totally destroy the image all right so i'm just editing the video and um i just um saw that i forgot to mention something um, even though these basic rules are fundamental to understanding how to use color in your images, don't um, restrict yourself to these rules. Um, you have the liberty to express your creative freedom, but then try using these rules more often, more like um, guidelines, but then don't let um, rules um, limit your creative freedom. So um, that's what about creatives. Um, we, will, we don't really like the rules um, subjecting our, our freedom of choice. So uh, please, uh, make your own creative choices, but um, use these rules more like a guideline how to apply colors in your images. Alright, so you can go out to the video. Here's another example of um, here's an example of complementary colors in your collaborating patterns. So, in this image, you can see the two dominating colors are the teals and the oranges. In this image, the teals are more restrained to the um, the clouds and the oranges is you know, bleeding into the sands and also the water and also there is also um, the teal color showing on the water here because you know it's reflecting the sky so um, I had to do a little bit of painting and masking here to add more blues to this side of the image there's the before image So here's the before image and you know here's the after so as you can see a lot has uh, been drastically done in this image um i created a preset for this um, image i used i think what i used was um the teal and orange preset i think or maybe it was Yes, yes, it was. I think this should be the one. Tell a Norwich Chicago City. I think that's what I used for this image, and that's how I collaborated this image. So I um, also tweaked it a little bit. I added a little bit more blues on the water because that's going to um, show that it's reflecting the sky. And um, you know, when looking at this image at the first glance. Um, as, as a raw photo when taking a look at the image uh, as a raw photo um, you can see that um, the everywhere is just some um, overcast with blues and you know um, one thing I know for sure is this image was probably just shot at the golden hour so um the sky the sun is really low in the sky so um it's going to have a more orange golden um, color cast to it so i know for a fact that oranges is going to be needed in this image so i looked i referenced my color wheel and the complementary color for orange is teal as i've mentioned before so I know that that's the direction I'm moving with my color gradient. So um, the first step, all I did was what I would do is you know to play with the um, the white balancing. Then I um, played with the tints and to you know to push a little bit more to the purples. Then also the exposure, the contrast, the highlights. And, you know all that and then i also went down to my com uh, camera calibration and you can see the settings here then i also went to the hsl slider that way i can you know I'm really bring out the blues and the aquas for the sky while also you know um, really increasing the saturation of the oranges in the sand and in the sun so um when you, are when you want to collaborate your image you have to actually think about the kind of colors that would be you know somewhat expected in that image so um, i couldn't i wouldn't make my sun purple or blue because that won't make any sense in the image uh, why would the sun be 
any other color apart from maybe white or yellow or orange so those are the kind of things that you know people really look out for or you should also really look out for when you're collaborating your images um center here where the focus is being pushed to um everywhere is um, from a darker shade of orange to a very lighter shade so this is uh, so an example of how you can pull focus so this is a very desaturated area you see everywhere here is darker in the image right here is um, brighter aside from color grading just as a bonus tip what you can use so you know pull focus in your images by going to the radial filter then you draw you uh, click and drag to the area where you want to draw attention for here is this the center of this image here and then what i'll do is i'll increase the saturation just just sorry the exposure just a bit and then invert it so it only affects inside this um this entire region here so i select and invert it totally works here if you press if i press o you can see the red as well as the area that's been affected so um after creating the exposure there i'll duplicate this then i'll click invert so now it's only affecting the outside and then i'll reduce the exposure so you see this two work together to you know create some sort of um, personalized vignette in effect so that um, also draws attention to the area you want i'm just going to delete that because um, i've already created that so this is very important color grading like any other skill um, requires practice for you to be better at it at first when you try it out it might be a little bit intimidating and you might not really understand exactly how to use these colors so constant practice is something that will really help you in mastering this skill color grading um, when i started out in color grading i wasn't the best like as is expected nobody is ever a pro when they start out but um, i kept color grading um, almost every day i'll probably color grade like 10 images every day um, i'll download some stock images online and i had lightroom mobile on my phone that's what i used to practice a lot so i kept color grading images again and again um, knowing what works and what didn't work um, a good way i use for references i'll look at people i looked up to in photography i'll look at their color grading i'll try and probably screenshot that image and then use it as a reference while color grading certain images so i can try and get um, the colors that they use understanding why they use certain colors and how they use those colors in their images that helped me to you know um, develop my own style I guess I mean I won't exactly develop my own style because um, people say I have a style but I try not to have a style because um, I don't really want to be um, confined to one certain style I try um, trying out different styles as as I go along so um, sometimes I use monochromatic sometimes I use you know, teal and oranges um, sometimes I might try out some split complementary um, so just for what works for that image but um, using creating your own style in color grading actually helps you helps people to identify your work even faster so um, without even looking at a certain image you they'll probably know that it's already your image just by the color grading so um, color grading is another way of um, branding yourself so um, having your own particular style that you're familiar with and you're, um, you frequently use is one way the viewers can know that that this is your photo that can help you stand out all right thank you for sticking around to the end of this video um like i said i have a gift for you i created some presets that i've been working on for um, this past few weeks and um, i just give them i'm giving them out so you can try them out and uh, try to get your foot in the door of color grading so um if you like these presets please um you apply them in your photos and then tag me on instagram and i'll share it on my story um i left instructions on how to use these presets they are in the folder so when you open up the folder you'll see the instructions on how to use these presets uh, also there are two of them one is for um, lightroom for your pc the other one is for you know lightroom mobile for those that use their phones to color grade their images so uh, the instructions are just in there so they are nothing really confusing or intimidating so um, remember if you like them put them in pictures and i'll share them and uh, we can talk about you know how to collaborate if you have any problem using them also contact me at breaking imaginations 
and I'll help you sort out those problems. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sticking to the end. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe, comment. Um, if there's anything I missed, please tell me in the comment section and um, I will address that. Also, if you, there's something you also want to talk about next week, please tell me. I'm also open to for idea, open to ideas. If you want to learn more about editing and you know some technical parts of um, color grading on Lightroom. I can also do a video on that. Uh, with that said and done, I'll see you next time. I mean, you start out and you think you just turn on the camera and just start talking, but a lot of dynamics, lighting, what to actually talk about, expressions, keywords. <sighs> but I love it. <laughs>